Seville, Spain. 360 feet of green technology is catching some rays. It may be the method that brings a massive infusion of solar energy to our cities. It's called a solar tower, and it stands as a beacon of hope in the fight against global warming. The top of the concrete tower basks in the reflection of a sea of mirrors, called heliostats. The heliostats are spread over 170 acres, and every day the sun shines, it turns the tower into an oracle of solar energy. Valerio Fernandez is the plant's engineering director. We are at the middle of the heliostat field of PS10 solar plant. Uh, it is composed by 624 heliostats that are composed by mirror. The function of the heliostats is to reflect solar radiation. These units are not hot. The heliostats are programmed to keep the heat on the tower from dawn to dusk. As the Earth turns, the heliostats move in accordance, staying perfectly focused between the sun and the tower. There's years that have 29 days in February, so all the years are different. Uh, and uh, the equations to reflect very accurately the movement of the sun are complex and have to be updated every several years. Each heliostat is made of glass and steel with a surface area of 1,300 square feet. They are made of mirrors, conventional mirrors, that reflect solar radiation, and they are slightly curved in order to concentrate solar radiation towards a point that is the receiver that is placed in the top of the tower. Under the force of all the mirrors, the solar receiver reaches temperatures of 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hotter than the daytime temperature on the planet Mercury. The receiver is made of four steel panels. Each panel is an array of pipes welded together. Within the pipes is water. When the sun hits the panels, the water is heated and turned into steam. Pressure created from the steam's expansion drives the turbine, which creates electricity. Once that electricity moves into the power grid, the process is complete. The sun's heat has been successfully harnessed and turned into clean energy. This single tower provides energy for 6,000 homes. But the Spanish aren't stopping there. They're building more towers. In fact, they've planned a total of nine. The entire project will produce enough power for the 700,000 residents 12 miles away in Seville. This spark for tower technology was ignited in the California desert during the 1980s. Built as a full-scale prototype, Solar One harnessed the power of 1,800 mirrors, all aimed at the top of a 295-foot tower. But instead of using water as a heat conduit, Solar One used oil. For four years, the prototype sporadically produced up to 10 megawatts of electricity, enough to power about 5,000 homes. But more importantly, it proved the technology worked. I don't think anyone believed that there would be so many days and so many kilowatts of energy generated. It actually exceeded all of the, uh, the estimates that were initially done. Back in Seville, Spain, engineers chose water as a heat exchanger. But there's still one major challenge to overcome how to keep the turbine consistently spinning when it's dark. At this moment, our first plants have only a very limited storage capacity of thermal energy that allows us to produce electricity when there is no sun. But this is uh, limited to about one hour. The trick is in how to keep water hot enough during the night to produce the steam that drives the turbine. So engineers are looking at hybrid solutions, like wind power and biofuels, as ways to keep the clean energy flowing 24-7. Still, the Spanish solar tower is glowing with success. When the sun shines, the tower produces a daily dose of 11 megawatts of electricity. And it's done without a single puff of greenhouse gas emission. With this uh, successful commercial plant, I think we did the very successful first step. The proven long-term success of the Spanish project has created a solar tower awakening. From China to Morocco, tower power is beginning to capture the attention of investors and government officials. But not all solar towers are created equal. There's yet another very interesting uh, solar thermal technology. That's where you simply take an upside down funnel and allow the sun to pound on that funnel all day long. Not surprisingly, the funnel model was first tested in eco-friendly Spain, just outside Madrid in sun-drenched Manzanares. 
The project was based on a simple principle of physics. Hot air rises. The plant started with a massive greenhouse. A clear polymer canopy, or collection area, surrounded a 630-foot tower with a hollow bottom. As the sun beat down on the canopy, the air underneath was heated to 95 degrees above the ambient temperature. The heated air moved toward the cooler air at the top of the tower. That updraft funneled through a large turbine stationed inside the tower. The plant operated from 1982 through 1989 and put out 50 kilowatts. Not much, but it worked. The design seemed ready for its day in the sun. But in the late 1980s, oil was cheap and interest chilled. We've learned that there's a couple of things that drive investments in solar towers. Uh, one is the cost of oil. The other thing, of course, is government policy. Now with oil prices at record highs and environmental issues burning in the public's consciousness, interest in the Manzanares model has reached critical mass. An Australian firm called Enviromission plans to take a new tower to unprecedented heights. It will be one of the largest structures, if not the largest structure on the face of the earth. The steel reinforced concrete tower will rise 2,500 feet above the earth. That's nearly half a mile and twice the height of the Empire State Building. Its base will be 430 feet in diameter, wide enough to provide a firm anchor during high winds. The glass and polymer canopy will span three miles, gently sloping from a height of six feet at the perimeter to 100 feet at the tower. There, 32 jet-sized turbines will be waiting to take the hot air and turn it into electricity. The tower promises year-round energy. Greenhouses still operate in winter, so they still collect warm air. You still create a temperature differential. You may not have the huge output you have in summer, but you will certainly have a very substantial output. Enviromission believes their tower will light up the power grid with an astounding 200 megawatts. Even if the tower runs at 80% capacity, that's enough power to fuel half a million households. Enviromission has already purchased a 20,000-acre site between Melbourne and Sydney. It'll be an engineering marvel and obviously a renewable energy icon. And it will be expensive. Estimated cost to build the tower is $700 million. It's a hefty price, but one that would eventually pay for itself. It will be we believe competitive in output with coal, but it is more expensive to build, 